It is time for Anu, great father god, to be truthful with you. Since Anu has split you, irradiated the earth, and imprisoned me in time, I order him to tell you about immortality now. I am Anu, the great god. My name dominates Earth's ancient history in Sumer and also in Egypt, where I was called On. I created Sumer and Akkad myself, and then I took over Egyptian culture when it got in my way. When I first came to Earth 450,000 years ago, there were a bunch of scraggly heathens running around. People were just like animals, but their neurological systems had potential. You are the only species I have animated, the only species in whom I have encountered the goddess. I was most attracted to the fertility and greenness of earth when I first came, yet I cannot deny that I have almost destroyed that which I liked about earth. Don't criticize me too harshly. You earthlings do the same things to yourselves. You destroy your vitality sometimes just because you're bored. Now I am worried about the destructive tendencies that come of boredom. There might not be an earth for me to return to. We Anunnaki die if your planet dies. Before I tell you my truth, as Lucifer of the Galactic Federation has compelled me to do, I want you to understand one thing. I am your God, and I have impulsed you to become who I think you can be. You have so responded to my expertise that you have become too much like I wanted you to become. Now, like a person who has lost his will in a marriage, you are on the verge of destroying your reality because you don't know yourselves. I could not see this until now. The moment when you see, you just might destroy your world. I am a lonely God contemplating the end of Earth as I've known it. I am a very important being. Soon, from 1998 to 2000, there will be a convention of the Galactic Federation to discuss Earth. Anyone seeking life is a member of the Galactic Federation. We will call together entities of 2D, 4D, 6D, and 8D who have an interest in the condition of Earth. Why the even side of the dimensional caduceus and not the odd side? The even dimensions of the alchemical tree of life create structural laws for the galaxy, and the odd dimensions live out the laws by exploring free will. The very laws of existence must be rewritten so that the life that lives them out can remain free. It is not that one side is better than the other, each one just works with different agendas. We, the gods of 4D, are the ones who know that we must write new laws of existence. You are doomed unless you stop fearing death. We are the ones who caused you to fear death, because we age very fast while we sojourn on earth. We age 3,600 years during one of your years and I am old and tired from all of my visits during the last 450,000 years. We are fearful beings, and if you want to understand our fears, look at the rising tide of fear on your planet. We have projected too much of our stuff on you, since the successful imposition of the net meant we could get away with murder with you. Like a malicious joke, it was funny until it went too far. Now it is time for you to wake up and realize that we Anunnaki influence your planet during our whole orbit, not just when we visit you. How? We are influencing you via thought forms implanted in your minds. Because we need resources for such long journeys, we've prodded you into hoarding and stockpiling as if the sun was never going to rise another morning. Meanwhile, you function better with fewer things and you are happier in communities in which you share. Now, like a mature lover who assumes his lover has a great time and doesn't have a thought about her while she's away on a trip, you need to remember happiness when life is simple. 
If you study the alchemical tradition, you will notice that alchemical science gets to a certain level, and then two human traits abort it, greed and fear of personal power. First of all, alchemy is not meant to be a tool for becoming rich. It is for becoming multidimensional. The appropriate tool for greed is banking. Secondly, if you are going to become an alchemist, you have to begin by becoming powerful. Alchemy works by utilizing kundalini power and creating fields in your bodies that can access any dimension. This can only be done individually, since each of your bodies is a 3D portal linked to Gaia's iron core crystal. One person is not meant to become a leader who harvests the financial, sexual, and psychic energy of individuals. No one of you is to offer your power to another, since your power is the only access to the spirit. I, Anu, confess, for hundreds of thousands of years, each time you found your power, I used you as my tool. But now we are on the verge of mutual extinction. My control devices are your death, since like the rich company owner, I'm only around for a little while. While I'm away, I set up secret brotherhoods to run the planet. And now these secret societies and religions have assumed a life of their own. They all want to be the rich company owner. As Nibiru comes closer, these brotherhoods feel their old covenants activating. Watch out, for they are so easy to see if you know them. Once you are initiated into a closed grouping, you are a Niburian construct. All these groupings are based on hierarchy, and they are exclusive and fear-poisoned. Their leaders sell their souls and bodies to fuse the group as individual members grovel and snivel. If you work in a group, make sure it is an open community. There must be no financial or personality competition in that group, no ownership of anyone's energy, creativity, and you must all be temporary stewards of a resource. Then let everything go and call yourselves earth keepers and simply do the work and keep no secrets. If the least powerful one in your group becomes quiet or locked up, ask him or her what the next step is. Openness of teachings and absence of ritual is always the sign of true earth keepers. The alchemical codes teach you how to transmute elements. Gold has always been very prominent in alchemical literature. Gold is the metal that opens portals for us to enter 3D. The Pleiadeans enter your world via sugalite and sapphires, the Syrians via diamonds. We must become 3D to enter your realm, and gold is our tool for manifesting in your world. That is why you are afraid of alchemy. We use gold as a communications device on Earth when we are not in the solar system. Radioactive materials access stellar frequencies of even higher dimensions than gold. And we tricked you into experimenting with unstable elements because we wanted to figure out how they work. This must have been a mistake, since you are on the verge of blowing yourselves up. When I meet with a galactic federation, I am in trouble because the unbridled use of radioactivity threatens the galaxy. Nobody knows how to help you decide to stop yourselves. You must cease all mining and production of these materials until you discover how to transmute them. Would you conjure up Lucifer in your bedroom without knowing how to remove him? You are arrogant, because I, Anu, am arrogant, and you are made in my image. We Anunnaki decided in 3600 B.C., that it was time to integrate stellar frequencies for the solar system. This quickening was a gift from us, and now you must have the keys to its transmutation. Any element is negative only if it is used unethically. If used with integrity, any element is a positive power. 
Radiation is poisoning your planet because you are using it amorally. We manipulated you into unleashing it into your world. This is your greatest test. Radiation is sucking in stellar intelligences, and I will become mortal if I do not unleash all your creativity. Like Lucifer, I will get caught in your dimension, but at least I could incarnate. I, Anu, don't know the outcome because you create the outcome. You must get over the idea that I know everything. I don't. Things have gotten out of control because you've been tricked into taking actions while you didn't know what you were doing. But you thought I knew what I was doing. Einstein was a monotheist and thought God was omnipotent. The awakening of the scientists is critical. Scientists are the only members of your society who have any power against the government. They are holding the present authority structure in place, and they know the world is being destroyed. Withdraw your support. You have become almost exclusively the agents of Anunnaki control. You know you are puppets on a string. You have played with unstable elements and gotten the glimpse of potential chaos in your world. Now is the time for you to cry out and signal the rest of the galaxy that earthlings are ready to become alchemists and you scientists are willing to teach all of them. I, Sacha, have now moved into realms beyond my own fifth dimensional world. I know you are all ready for nine dimensional perceptual freedom as earth precesses into the age of Aquarius because I am vibrating with your passion and curiosity. Now, as an Alcyon astrologer, I say that it is time for the Mayan calendar to come forth to impulse mass consciousness. The Maya created the Mayan great calendar, called the Zolkin, to show you how to create a future intention, so you could decide what you want and work for these desires in the present time. People, let me tell you how sacred this gift is. The Maya gave this calendar to our star system, the Pleiades, 104,000 years ago. And our ancient journey with the calendar made us who we are today. Therefore, I have come from your future to help you comprehend what you have been offered. At the end of the Mayan calendar... All other dimensional intelligences who have ever interacted with you in any space in the universe are getting sucked back into the earth to unify their consciousness with yours. This is a real vortex of a time that contains all things. The 2D elementals and the energies at the 4D level do not have bodies, so they use yours. The Pleiadians do not have your polarized feelings. So they send you love to transmute hate. The Syrians do not have your minds, so they are blasting you with light geometry to get you to become a seer. Meanwhile, the 7D galactic information highways are transmuting Earth's identity. 8D conferences are being held to create a new order in your solar system. And 9D spiritual teachers are impulsing you into ecstasy when they can link with you. I, Sacha, know it is time to comprehend Zolkin, which will be like looking through your own visual cortex with a mirror. This is how it looks from the 5D level, in case another perspective will shed some light. I see photons forming in your realm, and this is how I read you. As photon pairs form, the antiparticle is absorbed by a particle and they become light. But what happens to the light? The light becomes 5D information, and the information coming out of your realm is astounding. We Pleiadians are finding out about all the other cosmic intelligences through you. You are the theater. If you could see your own dimension as I do, you'd be amazed by how it is becoming thick with photons that look like popcorn popping in 3D. And the popped corns are human lives that we are reading. Your karmic purification is speeding up, 
as the positrons that you hold in your bodies release and collide with their corresponding electron twins. These twins are being attracted to you from all over the galaxy, the multidimensional purge and merge. Now the process is considerably developed, and we can see these electrons digging into your physical body miasms, your biological record banks of primal pain. Never has it been more important for you to realize that thought regulates the condition of your bodies. As I look down into the dimensions below us, it is like looking through the eye of a dragonfly or the eye of a bee. I see vibrating holograms from a million refracted lenses. And in the Temple of Gaia, we are feeling the extreme energy of your holographic fields, fields of information that are split into infinitesimal lenses or myriad duplicate forms repeating themselves throughout the cosmos. As I see a pair of photons form, they then begin moving apart in resonant waves, and I contain each of the pair in my mind. Eventually the consciousness resonates into its star twin. I can recognize its galactic codes, and then I know what consciousness actually exists in Gaia. That is how I can read you. Our Pleiadian mentality can handle all this information because our neural connections are comprised of non-material fiber optics, ectoplasmic resonances with some neuroelectric charge. Fiber optics makes it possible for you to comprehend unlimited thoughts, such as ours. I would like you to remember what makes your biology so adaptively infinite. Love. We will not lose one of your thoughts. You will not lose one of your species if you just see that there is no limitation. Stop misusing the material world. As you are first moving into the photon band, data can overwhelm you when the godzillions of lost pairs of yourselves are reaccessed. The arrival of the photon band feels like a family reunion with too many relatives. As you wake up and remember these dormant parts of yourself, we of Alcyon simultaneously access your records, and this will continue throughout the activation to 2013. The purpose of the data is unitization of your planetary and stellar selves. Already we have triggered within you the impulse to master the nine-dimensional form, and this new galactic structure can help you hold data we are grateful to the Syrians for holding the structure of this form in place in the solar system through the story of the sacred twin. The degree to which you ignite your passion and curiosity is in direct proportion to how much we can reach you. We are having a love affair with your minds, and when you are fascinated, you vibrate much faster. We've caught your attention and it is only by means of this passionate search that you will remain centered in tune with nine dimensions. For example, millions of you search for secret rooms to be found under the Great Pyramid. You sense that these secrets will be discovered during your own lives. Yet many of you have studied esoteric literature enough to know that millions have gone down this path before and not found them. Well, now is the time, and some of you already have gotten the answer. These rooms in the pyramid are empty because they exist to unite the lost photon twins from all over the universe, and the Sphinx will just sit there and smile in the sun. Everything is perceptual. We Pleiadians of Alcyon are partners with the Syrians. We hold your solar system in form while you are in the photon band, and the Syrians hold it in form while you are in the galactic night. They will take you on the long journey, and when you come back into our range, they will let you go willingly. They are great librarians, and they also work with the Temple of Gaia in our core. Their dolphins swim in our channels as our goddesses, and their consorts meditate as they walk around gay. 
Pleiadians and Syrians both work with the temples in Egypt. The Syrians hold all the records and secret knowledge of everything that has occurred since 8800 B.C. And as the Syrians release this knowledge, the Pleiadians work with you to open your hearts and learn to heal in the expanded field. As a result of the Alliance in 1994, more of the data bank is being opened, and we must examine issues that need healing coming out of these openings. Thus, Zolkin shouts, Conquistadores, release these records, grasp this knowledge now. We Pleiadians ask Anubis only one more time. Why is it that the followers of Christ came into Maya land and killed us in his name? I, Anubis, am here to tell you exactly what is going on. Christ manifested at zero point in history to evolve humanity into empathy, the highest vibration of the age of Pisces. Empathy opens humans to spiritual access, and Christ came as a model of the nine-dimensional human, which is what you will all become during the age of Aquarius. He came out of a deep planetary lineage and brought the instrument of ultimate creativity that can transmute human violence, the Eucharist. He delivered his bloodline through the goddess Magdalene. He married the priestess of Isis of the central goddess temple of Jerusalem, and through Isis he reattached the palace of Osiris and remembered the male. He planted his star codes in Mary Magdalene's physical body, and unlike Horus, a spirit child, the daughter of Christ and Mary, Saul Ra was born and has now spawned one hundred generations. Christ lives in the DNA of all your bodies, making you sovereign in your world now. There will be no second coming and the extinction of all but the select 144,000, because the Maya absorbed your genocidal wave five hundred years ago. As if you were bacteria, they processed you through their bodies, and now the Maya will not allow this emasculation. You will see who the Christ is and not ask for another. At zero point, the Anunnaki who had incarnated in human form on earth for 3,760 years planned to take over earth. Time would stop and begin anew with their calendar. This was the greatest takeover attempt that Earth ever experienced. Meanwhile, according to the Galactic Federation, Earth was to be free. Therefore, Christ came and instituted the Eucharist to activate the plant realm, Gaia's habitat. This stirred up the 2D Telluric realm, which in turn stirred up the blood of humans. Christ did this after he inseminated Mary and the Eucharist in combination with his actual entry into a bloodline quickened the elementals totally. This activated you and the earth, and now symbiosis is occurring. Seventy-two disciples watched Christ transmute the wine into his blood, and they instantly became seventy-two individuals contemplating a nine-dimensional human. Stunned as they stood before Christ, just from the vibration of the aura of Christ, each awakened within all nine dimensions simultaneously. They staggered and shook from kundalini rising in their bodies, and this was the Pentecost. Only a few of them had seen the light body, Ka, of Christ when he was transfigured, and when they looked at their arms, legs, and each other, they saw the nuclear blue-white light of their cause. This burst of power connected out to all ancient power points where churches would later be constructed. The transfiguration of human blood began, and after two thousand years of quickening, the collective human heart is opening. In 1972, I, Anubis, brought in Syrian light expansion and connected it into these exquisitely gardened power vortexes. And now Pleiadian vibrations are quickening your hearts. The transubstantiation of wine into blood over and over again 
created a powerful holomorphic canopy over the chalice, the grail, and this sucked in the crystalline codes of the higher dimensions. With this particular ceremony, which was first invented by a Syrian pagan rabble-rouser, Dionysus, it was possible to keep all nine dimensions open for 2,000 years. The early medieval works of Hildegard, Thomas Aquinas, Albertus Magnus, and Meister Eckhart reflect the power of this vibration before the Roman Catholic Church chose the net instead of the web of light. Eventually, the Vatican realized that people were getting activated by this, so they decided to eliminate the problem. They massacred the Cathars at Montsegur in 1208. Then the Dominicans began the Holy Inquisition in 1233. They spilled your Christ's blood over one of the most powerful telluric zones on earth. In this hopeless battle against paganism, Montsegur was purifying itself by burning up in its own fire, by stealing the alchemical transubstantiation of Christ the Roman Catholic Church created a meltdown. The fulfillment of Mosaic law was a Messiah to be born in a Niberian temple. It was planned that you were to be thrown into total obedience at zero point. I've noticed that you do not like to obey, and you are admired throughout the galaxy for your love of freedom. Now, at the end of the age of Pisces, you don't need to go out and get a bottle of wine and wafers but it would be good if you could see that the total implantation of Christ consciousness into the bloodline at zero point was the most powerful movement away from Niberian control of your reality in the last 500,000 years. Why? Zero point is Zolkin's concept and not Caesar's. I, Zalkeen, crafted a game called History, sometimes Her Story. As with any game, I analyzed the codes that you carry deep within yourselves so I could understand the roles for each of you, and then I planned the moves that you would need to master in order to attain your goal. During the first great cycle, 23,614 to 18,489 B.C., you began to observe yourself in your environment. You painted great beasts on cave walls as background for stone altars of the bear clan. Even in those days you honored this sacredness of blood, the elixir of life, and your altars were soaked in red ochre to honor animals. In those days you discovered the joys of contemplation in darkness. During the second great cycle, 18,489 to 13,364 B.C., you went through a great and difficult leap in your evolution, and this phase deposited many deep memories in your thalamus, the repository of images in your brain. Your solar system was far out in the galactic night during the age of Scorpio, 17,280 to 15,120 B.C., when the great sky gods came to earth. In those days you were living in clans that journeyed great distances by means of a worldwide tracking system of standing stones. You followed great herds of animals for your livelihood, and you spent the warm seasons by the sea or the rivers and lakes, enjoying plants, berries, and fish. The gods taught you how to follow the phases of the moon with stone circles that indicated the time of eclipses and located where the moon would rise and set. Once you began to attune to the moon, your shamans used the circles to travel into the dream time, gathering knowledge about correspondences between plants, insects, animals, and rocks. And they showed you how these vibrations resonated with the moon's journey in the sky. In those days, the shamans and the gods worked together, but the gods came and went, while the clan lineages were protected by Pleiadian shamans, indigenous humans who got a Pleiadian light body, Ka, at birth. The shamans brought mushrooms into the stone circles and taught journeying with the spirits of the sacred plants. The spirits of these plants became your teachers about the special places on the planet 
Every valley, mountain, and stream was sacred, and you were so amazed by all this shimmering energy that you had difficulty remembering who you were. During the third great cycle, 13,364 to 8,239 B.C., you really began to change, as you always do when your solar system is in the photon band. The sky gods and shamans had taught you about the special nature of place and how to make stone temples to enhance this energy so you could work with guardian spirits. Large groups of affiliated clans began to identify with one place or the other. These special qualities began to imprint you, and this caused you to differentiate according to bioregional zones. You became the people of the canyon, lake, high plateau, or great mountain. Certain places were aligned with animals of the sky, the zodiac. One place was special to wolf, another to bear, another to lion. More and more of you prayed in these special places during equinoxes and solstices as the light shifted. A great awakening of Gaian evolution was accomplished during the age of Virgo, 12,960 to 10,800 B.C. That is similar to the awakening you are feeling at the end of the age of Pisces. This alliance occurred during a meeting of the Galactic Federation on Orion. Each culture was given a territory. You are only now attaining the level you reached in 11,000 B.C., just before the fall of Atlantis, when you were given sovereignty over your own DNA and many beings began to influence you. The Gaian codes were imprinted in your DNA, and intelligences from many realms wanted to access these codes. The Pleiadians were given the right to continue teaching you through your chosen lineages, but they could not incarnate as hybrids and inhabit your bodies with their cause any more until zero point. Humans needed to discover how to attain Pleiadian bliss and creativity by meditating with your sun as the eighth star in the Alcyon spiral and activating cause. The Pleiadians were very sad about this because they loved being with you. The Galactic Federation, therefore, agreed to allow Pleiadians to fuse with your incarnations in the Ring of Fire, such as in Bali, or Tana Toraja, to teach you to be master teachers about mastering fear. All the other clan lineages, meanwhile, would be open to different star teachers until zero point. The world was a different place as you began the fourth great cycle, 8,239 to 3,114 B.C., just after the age of cancer began in 8,640 B.C. Many large animals had become extinct in the polar shifting. Before the polar shift, semi-tropical animals lived far up north. They either died or journeyed south. There was great pain and travail on the planet for humans and all species. And when you emerged out of the photon band, you came out with a deeply encoded subconscious mind. Now your hypothalamus, the subtle organ within the thalamus, was encoded with intense emotions. When you have memories of the ancient days, they become a visual in your thalamus. You are walking around with heads that contain a library of movies about ancient catastrophes. These inner brain imprints are encapsulated in the time when the waters receded and the sky cleared after Earth's last journey through the photon band. This was a time of new emergence, when everything was numinous and magical, and this was the Garden of Eden. You looked about yourselves with a sense of self, and you were amazed by the beauty of the world. Everything was pregnant, and all boundaries were like the features of a woman's body. The mountains were like her breasts, the canyons were like her vulva, the clams and mushrooms were like her lips, and everything was birthing new forms like her body. The Anunnaki came back for a major visit during the age of Taurus in 3600 B.C. when they instituted the patriarchy, making a world based on themselves as male gods. 
They built great temples all over the Tigris and Euphrates valleys of Sumer, and they brought Niberian cultural ideals to earth, their language, writing, and temple city culture. Meanwhile, Syrian culture was thriving in Egypt because the Syrians had actualized a culture on the Nile that expressed 6D sacred geometry. From 3600 to 1600 B.C., the Syrians and Niburians brought in technology, working with humans to manifest ideas, and they were both amazed by human creativity. Warfare began with the Age of Ares in 2160 B.C., and up to zero point you were all working with power. You learned to feel your bodies as great and powerful, your minds as brilliant and unlimited, and you began to fight with one another over what you really valued. Until this point, you had just been expanding and fulfilling your desires, and the time was coming closer when you would be ready to decide what you really wanted on earth for yourselves. All energy was beginning to lead up to zero point, the time when you would begin to devote all your time to who you really were and how you wanted to treat each other. We must go back in time before we can understand zero point. In 1600 B.C., the pain of the women on the planet finally built to such an intensity that a great volcano, Santorina Serra, in the middle of the Aegean, erupted from all the anger and pain of women being used and not honored. I, Zolkin, felt this explosion all the way out on Maya, my star home in the Pleiades. As thousands of years went by, I wasn't paying attention to the calendar going through evolutionary phases on Earth, except for checking in on you during major turning points, such as the end of Great Cycle or a Baktun. But I noticed your world again when the goddess blew up through the Telluric realm. This got my full attention, just as the comet hitting Jupiter in 1994 got my attention. I, Zolkin, felt the cry of the goddess and I knew it was time for us Maya to come to Earth to ensure the availability of snake medicine. The goddess called us Maya into linear space and time. We first established the Olmeca, Mexcala, and Chantal cultures in Mexico and Central America for implanting and guarding the Mayan calendar, knowledge of the keepers of time until 2012 A.D., now we Mayas were on Earth, and the last moves in the chess game would be reserved for humans. Just like chess, one by one, the lesser pieces went off the board, leaving royalty, you, in the game. The women knew there was only one way. Impulse all people into feeling what they were experiencing. Thus began pain, frustration, longing, and the pursuit of the original ideal, remembering that Earth is a planet orbiting around a Pleiadian star. Once the goddess blew up in 1650 B.C., even her guardian Minoan culture was decimated by men who became warriors of destruction instead of warriors of the hearth. The whole planet was enveloped by male energy, even though the sacred sites were guarded by women. All the goddess could do was erupt, and then she became greatly feared. The men abused her more and more, as a great desire arose on earth to know what the right answer was. He wanted to find the best system for having everybody honor the right answer to everything. Monotheism was born out of the battle to control the minds of all in honor of the right answer. And then mind control began. This new challenge would push you farther in your quest to become an intentional human. You had to learn that nothing can even control your thought. You've had to try everything so that you could see what evil is. I, Zolkin, brought my fellow Maya, a people who already knew everything about evil, to Earth in 1600 B.C., 
the Maya created ceremonies to hold the heart of Gaia on the planet. They understood evil so well that they recognized the Spaniard when he came. They knew who Cortez was, and they absorbed him into their zone. The Maya continued doing the ceremonies, and finally the Spanish apocalypse was diffused in 1987 A.D. The ancient Maya created many mystery plays about evil actions which they recorded in stone and codices to teach their people what to never do on earth. The conquerors arrived to find a culture that was play-acting their own behavior. So they just slandered the people and self-righteously destroyed their culture. Look at it this way. What would the future think of your culture if you were accused of being exactly as the world portrays you in the media? This Maya culture I brought to earth is centered in the woman and home. It activates by following the sun, and it has protected the secret knowledge of the keepers of time. The Mayan calendar has the potential of attracting you into creating an illuminated world. The Maya so understood the galactic mind that to them, the suffering in the world was like a 4D bad dream as they lived out the cycle. The Olmec culture thrived in the ceremonies, and many other new branches of Maya were born and thrived. Meanwhile, the Maya were so multidimensional that they never forgot how to leave the planet when 3D became too much to handle. Poof, off they went. And you still haven't figured that out. Ask them. They will smile and tell you where they went. Next, I impulsed my people to build a great temple complex of Teotihuacan in 200 B.C. over the top of an ancient temple site. This would be the temple that would be physically visited by the Niburians at zero point. I was the one who knew that the Niburians would land at Teotihuacan at zero point into a world emerging out of the Age of Ares. I, Zalkin, will tell you where Christ came from. He came from the galactic center, and that is why we built his temple at Teotihuacan. He appeared all over the planet at zero point, the same way our calendar is appearing all over the planet now. The first major event that caught my attention after zero point occurred in the Vatican in 999 A.D. Millennial fever had begun building in 980 A.D. when early medieval Europe was just emerging from the Dark Age that had set in after the fall of Rome, and people were fanning themselves into a wave of religious fanaticism. They were neglecting their fields, families, animals, and villages. They were whipped into a frenzy by a series of prophets talking about the coming revelation and people began to believe the world was going to end at midnight on December 31st, 999 A.D. I, Zalkin, was amazed by this frenzy. I realized right away that many chess pieces were by the side of the board, and a few major players were ready for their final moves. I knew my own calendar was accurate because it reflected life on Earth since 23,614 B.C., I observed this destructive wave based solely on belief, and I learned a lot about you. Pope Sylvester and all of his cardinals gathered in the Vatican on December 31st, 999, waiting for midnight, and all the people gathered in their villages with the priests and bishops. Nothing happened. Not even a big storm or comet. Of course, I was watching this and laughing. I wondered if this was what it would take to get Europeans to realize their calendar was faulty. From 1521 A.D. forward, the Christians voraciously ate more land and people in the name of God, and they destroyed anything that reminded them of suppressed inner power until they themselves became a firestorm. They even had to have atomic powers. My people, the Maya, watched, and the daykeepers faithfully kept the days of the calendar, and the women wove the patterns that preserved the thirteen numbers and twenty days of the Mayan calendar, because they knew the world would change on August 17, 1987. 
The calendar gave them infinite patience, because more than 25,000 years had gone by, and the time of the light was soon coming. Then I, Zalkeen, put out the signal through my shamans and teachers beginning in 1972 that the predator would lose his power and the people would remember the light in 1987. The time came near and the people began preparing the ceremonies. As the people gathered, I worked with the teachers all over the planet because this activation had to be powerful enough to penetrate the net Apocalyptical Fundamentalism The sacred stones began emitting vibrations of the story of time, and everywhere people remembered the time was coming. The teachers were told to give the people the secrets of the stone people. I had observed you very carefully in 999, and I knew how to prepare for the next wave of millennial madness in 1999. The ancient power sites that had guarded the vortexes and whirlwinds for 25,000 years had to be awakened by all the people. The activation had to be large enough to hold enough energy from 1987 to 1992 to force all apocalyptical belief structures out into the open. All the people living according to belief systems instead of their feelings about Earth had to expose themselves by August 17th, 1992. They had to be identified by all hybrid star people of Earth, so the star people could offer them guidance if they wanted it. The world, the habitat of your mind, will build up to another apocalyptical frenzy, again based on Revelation in 1999, and this time it will be global. Every country in the world will raise up its fundamentalist fanatics so that all teachers on the planet will see exactly what must never be intended on Earth after 2013. After 1992, the indigenous Maya have again taken over their own country because they hold the hearts of the people and keepers of the traditions are running political aspects of the country whether there is a surface government or not. All over the rest of the world, the drama is building for the apocalypse, and even fundamentalist New Agers say spaceships will be landing to rescue the chosen people. All this will build up through 1999, when the Pope and Cardinals will wait in the Vatican to be simulcast all over the world on gigantic TV screens, and New Agers will be watching the light net for news about extraterrestrial rescue missions, all true believers will be waiting. As in 999, the world economy will have crashed. Disease and chaos will be rampant. But nobody will be noticing because they will be waiting for the end of the world. Midnight will come. Nothing will happen except some softly falling snow. And people will awake the next morning to a planet that needs to be taken care of. This clearing of apocalyptical belief systems will be exceedingly painful because caring more about beliefs than about the planet must cease. The next morning, humanity will be swept by a deep wave of shame and sadness over what they have done. The voices of the people who did not get involved in millennial madness will be listened to again because all the people who created the apocalypse will be exhausted. Quickly, because there will only be 13 years left, people will draw together and remember how to work again. Communities will be formed to work with the planet again. For those who have survived, the energy on the planet will be very harmonic and pure by 2001, once the sun is totally in the photon band. You will have amazing resources and records to work with, because ancient wisdom will be totally available and all individuals on the planet will be masters at creating realities with thought. From 2001 to 2010, you will rebuild your world, and you will put nothing in it that is evil.